However, the Biden campaign says it sees Florida as, quote, winnable in the November election. And one of the critical counties at stake is right here in Miami-Dade. It was once considered a Democratic stronghold, but voters have become more Republican every election. I recently got the opportunity to speak with some voters at the historic ball and chain in the heart of Little Havana, and they told us what issues matter most to them for the November election. Take a listen. South Florida represents so much to so many. It is in many ways a representation of the melting pot of America. We spoke with four South Florida voters with many different strong opinions, but united in civility. Sandra Dennis, a lifelong Democrat, helps workers and tenants in Miami. Her parents are immigrants from Haiti. I'm a Democrat through and through. Isabella Rodriguez, the daughter of Cuban exiles, used to be a Democrat. She switched to the Republican Party in 2020 and now supports Donald Trump. I'd like to say that I didn't leave the Democrat Party. I feel like the Democrat Party left me. Alfonso Treto is a public school teacher who used to be a Republican and then switched to Democrat. His parents immigrated from Mexico. I, I am a centralist, but I am more Democrat. And Kelly Thomas comes from a military family. She was registered as a Democrat, but then switched to no party affiliation. And I have some progressive values. I have some conservative values. Sandra, are you enthusiastic for November? I'm not enthusiastic, but I can get enthusiastic. <laughs> Give us the solutions. We want to get excited about that. Are you enthusiastic about November? Uh, I am. We've seen... Um, um, President Biden's shift, Trump is a little bit more set in his ways, and I think that's very unfortunate. Do you think that either one of them could change substantially enough for you to be enthusiastic about one or the other? No, but as a voter, I have a duty and a responsibility to vote. So, Ella, are you excited about November? I'm very excited about <laughs> November. <laughs> I'm excited about the potential of four years, four additional years under Donald Trump. They all feel the economy is among their two top issues that inform how they will vote in November. Me personally, I having to move back in with my parents. Instead of moving um, forward and being an a independent adult, I would like to see the candidates and whoever gets in the office in November to at least address affordability in housing, because I'm not really seeing that right now. What are the issues that you think most matter to you? You know, what matters to me as a millennial is climate is an economy that allows for me to have a savings, allows for me to, to think about retirement. Isabella worries one crucial American pillar is vanishing. Is that we're seeing a death of the middle class and you're either existing in poverty and trying to get by or you've got bountiful resources where you're not affected by this. But, you know, the, the, the saddest part of it is that America was built on the middle class and we're slowly losing that. And when it comes to immigration, these voters disagree over border policies. And they also have different views about the nearly 8 million migrants who have come to the U.S. since 2021. The housing crisis is not a result of the 8 million folks. Everywhere we look in Miami, there's developments going up. Yeah. They're building for everyone else except for working class people. Yeah. And so the question for me when it relies on immigration is that let's not blame immigrants for the issues that we have not dealt with with our people. We need to not use immigration as just a platform point to, in, to enrage voters or point fingers at the other party. I think immigrants need to be treated with compassion. I, I see immigration as opportunity. Um, in most cases, but I understand that, you know, you can't allow everybody in because there's a, a process. Everybody says um, there's terms that I really don't like, uh, uh, get in line, you know, because there's been people that are waiting. But for those people, there isn't really a line sometimes. So I'm not a big fan of the wall because what is the wall really going to do? Some people come with expired visas. I have different views when it comes to the border. I think that the southern border needs to be closed. I think that it's unsafe for our country. I'd love to believe the idea that everybody that's crossing the southern border is doing so in, hope, in search of the American dream, but that's just not true. I do agree with the wall. I think that it makes sense. I think you lock your doors at night to keep your house safe, and I think that we need to have some kind of measure to keep our border safe as well. With just seven months until the November election, I wanted to know what they would tell both President Biden and former President Donald Trump. I would not talk to former President Trump. That's a non-starter for me. To Biden, you could lose this election. Um, I think you need to listen to your constituents, housing, student loans, uh, your foreign policies. You need to get aligned with what is happening, what Americans are saying. Um, and he needs to rise to the occasion.
I would tell Biden and Trump the same thing, which is that Americans need to come first. And, you know, of course, as a Trump supporter, I feel like um, Trump are, are already does that. And I do think that he needs to talk about other issues. And maybe, you know, one way that we haven't touched on is student loans. I think that that's a huge issue and something that Republicans never talk about. And I'd love to see Donald Trump talking about student loans and the housing crisis. One thing that I would tell Trump is don't demonize um, people who are here, you know, especially immigrants, because, I mean, it's not, we are a land of immigrants, to be honest with you. Um, Biden, I mean, you know, I'm not too happy with everything that's been going on, but he is um, riding the ship as best as he can, but he has to try to get both parties to find a common ground. I would tell both the candidates to be real, to be transparent, to make me want to vote for you and not against the other guy. I want to thank those extraordinary uh, people that I had a chance to, to spend part of the afternoon with. I want to bring in uh, former Florida Democratic Congressman Donna Shalala. She also served as the Secretary of Health and Human Services under President Clinton. She's the former president of the University of Miami. Tim Miller, former communications director for Jeb Bush's campaign. He is writer at large at The Bulwark and an MSNBC political analyst. So, uh, Donna, you know, listening to that conversation of these four extraordinary people, it's almost as though it's really a representative slice of South Florida. And both you and certainly Tim know Little Havana well. You represented that community in Congress. What did you get take away from their conversations, Donna? That it's the economy, stupid that it's uh, people are really concerned about the economy. Uh, you know, you didn't bring up abortion or uh, um, Amendment 4 that's going to be on the ballot. And I'm glad you didn't, because my hope is that we can pass it with the votes from um, from uh, from women and from men, um, whether or not they're affiliated with the Republican or the Democratic Party or they're or they're independent. Yeah, I mean, it, Tim, uh, we didn't bring up what what the conversation started as is what are the issues that care that you care the most about? And certainly abortion is an issue very, very dear to many people and having an impact on how they're going to vote. What did you get out of that conversation, Tim? Well, firstly, Jose, I want you to invite me back to Little Havana. I miss it. I haven't, I haven't been. Uh, it's been too long since I've been back in Miami. Um, but uh, my main takeaway from that was that you know, Joe Biden needs to be able to create a contrast with those voters, maybe not uh, the one that was clearly for Donald Trump, but for the rest of those voters, that he actually cares about their concerns and he's trying to address them on a range of issues, whether it be cost of living, inflation, uh, schools, uh, you know, college. Um, and, and Donald Trump doesn't care about them. Donald Trump cares about himself. Donald Trump cares about the, his his conspiracies about the 2020 election, um, and and that message seems like it's breaking through a little bit. But that's got to be the big frame for Joe Biden this year, and and that's I think how he can improve on on numbers in Miami Dade, where he lost a lot of ground in 2020. Um, but you know, there's certainly going to be some folks that are going to be MAGA there that have decided that they're all in for Donald Trump because they're America first. Uh, but for these rest of these swing voters, they need to know that Joe Biden is trying to address these concerns. Maybe he's not perfect, like that last or second to last guy, the Hispanic man said, you know, he's trying. He's making incremental change to try to improve and address these issues. Donald Trump is running to stay out of jail. That's the contrast for Joe Biden. Uh, yeah, and I, his, know, his name is, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Donald. Sorry. Uh, Jose, I was struck by the fact that uh, a couple of them mentioned student loans, which Joe Biden is trying desperately to uh, uh, to address uh, without a lot of help out of uh, the House of Representatives. And um, he's got to make that point over and over again. But it was very clear these are bread and butter issues. And I can't think of anyone better than Joe Biden, who understands the working class uh, people. And um, I think he will appeal uh, to the people in Miami-Dade in particular. Florida is a bigger lift. But um, the contrast with someone that's trying to keep themselves out of jail and demonizing immigrants, his comments yesterday were outrageous. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about that, because uh, Alfonso, the gentleman that was part of our conversation, uh, mentioned specifically that Trump shouldn't demonize people, shouldn't demonize immigrants. And as Donna, you're saying just last night, uh, Trump once again used this dehumanizing language about migrants, said that uh, the president was creating a border bloodbath. H how is that 
having an impact, or is it, do you think, Tim, having an impact on the people that aren't already determined to vote for Trump one way or another? Yeah, so I think that there's one thing that's clear to me. Um, I think a lot of times Democrats look at this and say, oh, that language is really going to hurt with Hispanic voters and black voters. And, and I don't know, you know, you see in those focus groups, Hispanic and black voters aren't a monolith. They all have various interests and various concerns. I think the one place where it clearly has hurt Donald Trump is with the suburban voters where he's bleeding, suburban voters of all races, uh, college educated, voters with kids. They don't like him. I, the, the way that he is as a role model, model, his bad character, his bigotry, uh, that has really hurt Donald Trump and is going to continue to cause him to bleed votes among college-educated suburban voters. That's not really his problem in Florida. As far as how do you get to the more working-class voters where Democrats used to be strong and have lost some altitude? And, and, I, and I think that clearly his dehumanizing language doesn't particularly help with that vote, but that's not going to be enough. That's not going to be determinative. We heard in that focus group that people are going to need some more substantive, a, a substantive contrast from Joe Biden on economic issues and abortion and other issues as well. I mean, Donna, on the abortion issue, the Biden campaign says that they think that Florida may be winnable because, among other things, of the state's abortion ballot measure this November. What do you see as that having a role in the decision one way or another out of Florida? Well, I would say two things. Number one, it's not only abortions going to be on the ballot. And by the way, it's a very carefully worded ballot amendment. It retains, for instance, uh, the legislative language on a notification of parents or guardians uh, for minors. It, it starts by saying that there really should not be any government interference um, in a woman's right uh, uh, for her whole uh, for her own health care. So I think that it will attract more voters uh, from both parties and independents. But also marijuana is going to be on the ballot. That may turn out younger voters. But still, Joe Biden needs to make his case as clearly as he possibly can about improving the economy, about providing opportunity, about dealing with student loans, so that people see the kind of uh, kitchen table issues as things that he cares about and he's trying to do something about. So I think it helps. Um, but uh, all of us who are leading those efforts, the efforts in particular for a woman's uh, uh, reproductive health, want to make sure that we have a broad appeal to voters um, in Florida. And, of course, uh, uh, you know, five of the women's health centers, of the 12 women's health centers in Miami-Dade County, are in Hialeah. That tells you something about the broad-based support uh, for this particular issue. Uh, apparently, Donald Trump's going to say something about abortion uh, next week. We see it as a women's health issue that's much broader. Donna Shalila and Tim Miller, thank you both so very much. Let's meet up again soon in Little Havana together. I think that's a, it's a good plan. Have a cafecito or more. Okay, but let's go to Hialeah, <laughs> so too. <laughs> Hialeah, absolutely. La ciudad que progresa. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.